Yeah, it put tears in our eyes when we walked in there. It was that obvious. And I've seen photos and images. And I'm telling you right now, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh no, really? Yes. Well, all I want to know is what stopped you from seeking help? Tell us the truth. And that's what you consulted with a lawyer? Yep. We believe she was beyond help already? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you just heard was the 911 call made by the father of a 10-month-old girl whom he described as dead as a doorknob. And the case only goes downhill from here. In this video, we're taking you through the case of Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari and how their neglect became the cause of death for poor Mary Welch. Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari were the parents of three, the youngest of which is our point of interest, because on August 2nd, 2018, the 10-month-old daughter, Mary Ann Welch, passed away. And from the very first 911 call, the investigators knew something was inherently wrong. Well, how long ago did you find the child? Uh, it's about an hour and a half. I um, was waiting. I called my lawyer per se to ask, you know, what's the next thing I could do? And they said, wait till... So, uh, they're here to call, uh, you know, the police and get back on me. Uh, basically, got the phone right away from them, and I just kind of went ahead and did it anyway. And they're all up here. So I was just, I, I was waiting on legal counsel. So you found the child an hour and a half ago? Yeah. And called your lawyer first, correct? Yeah. Okay. Are there any other children in the home right now? Yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to call the police or not. I, I have no idea what to do. Okay. We wrote this one out. We're going to investigate. Um, sure. When was the last time that you had contact with a child? Uh, last night. Um, about last, yeah, yesterday afternoon, about 3 uh, p.m. You know, it goes to the bed. What time do we usually have dinner? Oh, well, that's not instant. They're not all, they're not all kind of run up and get what she, yeah, she did for the Eastern, uh, you know, she's off for a half hour after that, and no time for that. Okay. She's been how old are the other children? Uh, four, and here's, there's two other children? Yep. And they're at home right now, right? Yep. Halfway through the call, the 911 respondent turned into an interrogator as he couldn't believe what he heard. He called his lawyer first after finding the baby was quote-unquote not breathing and checked on the sleeping baby after nearly 38 hours. And to make matters even worse, the baby was reported 90 minutes after the discovery that quote, there's no heartbeat. So the dispatcher not only sent the officers to his house in Kent County, but had his suspicions that this was a case of child neglect. The officers responding to the scene further backed that as they reported seeing, quote, limited baby food, a dirty house with mice feces and drawers, and a filthy mattress where the body was found. To give some much needed answers, the two were called in for some questions. And as we interlink the two interrogations together, you'll see the extent of the neglect that the poor girl faced. While Tatiana was interrogated, Seth sat and waited for nearly two hours for the detectives. But from the very start, you can tell who's more guilt-ridden for the loss. Hey. Tatiana, this is my supervisor. We've seen each other, but I don't think we've met. I'm sorry for your loss. I know that uh, obviously the last thing you want to be doing is this. Man, sorry about that. We're right there with Tatiana. It's taking a while to get through it, so let me give it a chance. But what? Tatiana doesn't flinch or change her posture and respectfully shakes the detective's hand. While Seth here feels like he's being owed, he only crosses his hands, which indicates a defensive posture from the get-go and doesn't even acknowledge the detective's apology. Now, while this isn't incriminating evidence, it is sure building up to one. Part of the reason Welch is frustrated is because he had to wait while Tatiana was spilling the beans for two hours. But from this point on, we'll show you just how similar the two are in their parenting style. Um, really, 
what I kind of like to do is just uh, to get a better understanding of how we are here today, um, kind of go back a few years even just to get to know you and your family a little bit. So okay. do you go by Tantiana or do you have a nickname? Tatiana. Tantiana. Okay. Nickname's not really seem to work. You can just give us an easy nickname. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> how many children do you have? Sorry, bye. Three. Three. Okay, yep. Right? And it's, yeah. Any medical issues or any, nothing Not like that? Okay. None at all. And for, is she in any kind of daycare? Does she go, no. does she have preschool? Um, no, I own school. I have my, um, my degree in early childhood. Oh, you do? Okay. So Good I, for you. So I her being at home at the farm, I can at least give them an initial education before yeah. we decide to send them off to work for grade school. Absolutely. So, have um, <laughs> so does um, a doctor that she sees, does she have a primary doctor? Not anymore. We okay. did have it's great and everything, we just don't. Uh, we only go if there's an issue and there just hasn't been. I'm good. Maybe, maybe six months? Six months. Maybe. Yeah, I don't want to budget to it. I know it's a while ago. And so at early six... Early enough for her to get... Well, it was, we were, um, yeah, early enough for her to get her vaccination or her I mean, we were consistent with it. And then afterwards, they, we just did a lot of research. And we didn't feel the need to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Lynn Schoenow is very um, gracious with us and understanding. And sure. You actually don't have to do that at all. Mm -hmm. I'm very anti-medical industry is because of uh, what happened with her birth. Um, she coughed one time, uh, and uh, so they said that they had to keep her under observation for 72 hours to make sure she didn't have a breathing problem. She didn't have a breathing problem. She coughed one time to clear some birth fluid out of her lungs right and they kept us under observation for 72 hours um all oh, while wow, you're paying for it of course yeah the bill was about fifteen thousand dollars so mm -hmm. um so that was kind of um that was a kind of a kick in the rear uh and then afterwards we had some problems where i actually had a doctor uh, make a fraudulent cps claim and I actually forged paperwork and stuff like that and i tried to make a complaint about it but nobody listened from these brief interactions with the medicine industry, the two had developed a quote-unquote anti-medical system mindset. And even though Seth mentioned it almost immediately, Tatiana will reveal it through more stories about her daughter. This is going to be the detective's window through which they'll uncover the depth of neglect in their home. So, um, so that was, that was about my last straw with it. Um, was that, was that to do with the helmet? And is yeah. that all, so it all started with... If I'm right, it all started with the helmet. At what visit, obviously it was probably the last visit, mm -hmm. is when he recommended the helmet, the yeah. head shaping. But so there was never any concern about the shape of her head from zero to 18 months? No, it, and it, that's why it was such a concern for us as to why you would just bring this up out of out of nowhere. And So what was the problem with the shape of her head, according he to him? It was, it was off. It was just not circular. And... I mean, I wasn't offended. I was just taken aback. And then um, my stuff uh, found out that they, it's commission-based with these products that they try and push. Uh -huh. So um, we don't know specifically the research they Sure. But we think that we're trying, trying to push the helmet. It was a $3,000 helmet for that and called CPS and said that we were being the class bullers or something out there. Okay. And uh, then that's when we went to So was it the first time he ever pushed that home? Was it right around the 18 months? That's the first I time he I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless he spoke to Seth otherwise, but I, I doubt it. Oh, well. uh, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the immunization stuff, and so I kind of balked against that, and they didn't like that either. Um, you know, they even got to the point where they, um, the first time we changed doctors, they called GPS on us just for changing doctors because the doctor we were seeing was all the way in Byron Center. I've never even heard of a head shaping helmet. Have you ever seen young children that it looks like um, 
seems just like Down syndrome will wear it, and it's just it like cuts here and it cuts like that, and it's big and creepy. Maybe I have seen that. It, maybe I have. Yeah. It, it looks quite invasive, and I just I'm heavy. I just want to like get neck problems or back problems. Mm. Shit. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. When the doctor recommended the expensive head shaping helmet, they did their research, refused, and switched doctors. Now, normally that's no reason to call Child Protective Services, but according to the law, doctors can only do so when they notice signs of abuse or neglect. So Welch and Tatiana both are telling their side of the story, but when the detectives get in touch with the doctor who recommended it, perhaps he'll tell them the side of abuse or neglect that these two are skipping over. Also, Tatiana and Seth gave different reasons why CPS was called. Tatiana claimed it was because of the refusal of the helmet, and Seth said it was because they switched doctors. The detectives are starting to zero in on the problem, and more specifically, they're zeroing in on why only the 10-month-old daughter was the one subjected to this neglect, not her elder siblings. They do so by shifting gears and talking about how the elder siblings had a hospital birth, but the third one had a home birth. How does that work? Wonderful. Was that was that a choice? Yeah. Was that like um, what do they call it, like a uh, midwife or something? Yeah, it was a home birth. Okay, I so how does that work when you choose to have? First off, I mean, why did you go from being from her in a hospital and some transformation here where you said we want to do um, um, the midwives? Yeah. Yeah. The um, being at the hospital was very amazing. They uh, with me after she was born they wanted her out of the room they wanted to stay for three days um because uh apparently i pushed out a lot more fluid than they were expecting so she coughed and like, well, we need to keep her for testing and then um that just makes it because they just wanted to charge us more i don't know because mm -hmm. there's a theory yada yada whatever yeah, they never all go right exactly right. You know. so i just think they wanted to keep us there for three more days and then we had they wouldn't like allow me to see her except to nurse and saying, Oh, you can just keep her here. Don't worry, well, you can rest. I wanted to see my baby. Yeah. And they would have like Wick come in and give me information that you and I have newborn portraits. So can I just go home? Right, right, right. So we just didn't want anyway. So that just turned you off to the And having a home birth right after uh I gave birth, Seth went out and Bought me a pizza and I ate that whole pizza. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, bonus. Right so that's why I just didn't. It never, you know, bothered me too much that she was skinny because she was. She came out. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when did it first? When did it like dawn on you that she's thin? Oh, just when she came out, where she had just been up pacing around all night, and then baby starts sliding out. And things are a lot easier when you do them at home, I'll tell you what. Well, yeah, you don't have to drive anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And, and the position they put you in in the hospital is there. It's bad medicine. Just whatever. What position in the home? And then you just stand up. Do you really? Yeah, and the gravity just shoots the baby right down. You don't, they don't have you up, facing upward, pushing against the gravity. Makes no sense. Um, no, it actually would make sense if you think about it. That, yeah. I, no, I think, so you you have to just kind of be under there like you're you're like quarterback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she got up there. She got up there. Um, uh, she, you know, she was late for the delivery. She checked over the baby, said she's healthy. And, you know. Is that what she does? A uh, midwife, they kind of tie off their tubes or whatever it is they have to do. And they just they <laughs> yes. They do the dirty work that anybody could do. It's just no, a, lot aren't, uh, yeah. a lot of us just aren't willing to do it. But yeah, really, what they I mean, they you know they mop up the blood and yeah. Yeah. So, so you how does the midwife work? Is that through a hospital, through a clinic? How do you reach? Yeah. How does this How does uh, this work? Google. <laughs> oh, okay. I just searched on midwives in the area, or um, also their Facebook groups like Home Birth. Um, in West Michigan, Cedar Springs, um, home birthing, and I just asked a lot of different women for advice. So, so now, what is a what what is a midwife? Is it someone that knows what they're doing, or can I be a midwife? Uh, you cannot be a midwife. You okay. need medical training. Well, okay, that's a, that's what okay. I wanted. So they is, is it like actually a certification? Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Um, and she she's been training with her grandmother. Excuse me. Nope, that's all right. Who's been training with her grandmother? So I trusted. I like the whole genealogy. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah, she gave birth to all three of her kids at her home, and mm. um, has been doing it for about forty years before me. So, 
you know, like over like, you know, your check sheet of check this to see if the baby is out, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. And then do, do they do all the recording of birth or is that something you guys do or? I, I think ish. Yeah, it seems like they my, my wife kind of deals with more of the paperwork. Yeah, <laughs> For someone who has just lost a child, that's an awfully big smile. And if you think about it, the way he described the childbirth, it's highly likely the baby would have hit the ground or a couch if they're not caught midair. So what if that's the reason the doctor called Child Protective Services on them? Because he detected something wrong with the baby's head? Also, just because they didn't resort to official medical help doesn't mean they can keep the house the way the detectives described. The benefit the detectives get from interviewing these two separately is that they get to point out the inconsistencies in their stories. You bottle feed, breastfeed, pump, uh, pump. So when you gave birth, work? Yeah. Okay, where did you work at? At the Cedar Spring Flyer. So when you were working at Cedar Meyer, while you were at work, did you leave work to breastfeed or did you leave pumped bottles at home for shop to feed? I left pumped bottles at home. Okay. So how do you do that? When you when you set up your pump, I mean I know how the pump works, mm -hmm. but is that something you refrigerate, something you freeze, something you do fresh every day? What about, uh, so how does that work? Uh, it depends on my shift, but usually it's, it's, I pump fresh every day, and I will leave one out on the counter, reach it on the fridge, and then there will be some in the freezer. So if he does run out during the day, there's some extra in the freezer on those days where I'm just, pardon my language, but a little more swollen than Yeah, right, usual. yeah. So um, what was um, Tatiana working? No. So, so Tatiana was home, and, and she did all the feedings, yeah. right, right from the source. Uh, um, if if Tatiana went to Meyer, yes. and that was in case she had the latch on, yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. So, because with the other two, Tatiana would leave a food source at home because she was working some. Um, oh yeah, when she would go to um, the farmer's market for farm produce business. Um, but last year, which is last year, so we did that. She took both kids with her pretty much every time. Okay. Where I couldn't go to market anymore, so I stayed at home and work on the farm. Yep. So, um, so feeding the children has never been a real part of your response. Like more. Well, I've been like I've been feeding like her her dinner. Uh, you know, I feed her tons of salad food. I feed her three or four of those, you know, those Gerber cups. Okay. And she just wolf them right down, no problem. Were, were you were you guys buying salad food or making salad food? Both. Okay. What what were you making? If we made anything, it was just like sweet potatoes, grinded up and yeah, yeah. You know, she made the thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. So what she what she was saying is um, what she could recall where is is uh, like some vegetables out of your garden. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe whatever it was you had growing at that time. Yeah. And then she'd throw something, in it, maybe breast milk, to make the vegetables more palatable. Pal 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 yeah. And then she would make like a little fruit smoothie, maybe some blueberries, some some yeah. like that. And then she did say that potatoes and stuff like that. When did you when did you guys start with her on solid foods? It's been a couple months now. Um since <laughs> the beginning of summer so when you left some so you would leave one bottle on the counter mm -hmm. so that could be room temperature yeah. and then you put how many typically in the fridge about three okay and then how many did you typically have on tap in the freezer oh boy like 12 and so those are just um, in the bottle, nipple inverted, and here. No, How's that they're work? not in the bottle. Okay. They're in a freezer safe pouch. Oh, like a, and then, oh, and then that gets stuffed down into a bottle. No, the pouch gets put into a a pot, and then you um, with not boiling water, but warm enough water mm -hmm. so it defrosts, uh -huh. and then you pour it into a bottle. Oh, I gotcha. And then let it sit so it's not too hot. And so you would keep about twelve of those in a freezer yes. guesstimate. Yeah. Okay. Did she leave you bottles of breast milk to nurse her, or did you not nurse? No, we just had, uh, that's when I would get her solid food. Okay. So, um, so in October, so from uh, so October 23rd to November 23rd, one to, to December to January, 
to February. So basically the first four full months, she was fresh from the source bre breastfed as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And same story, if you went somewhere, she went with you, yeah. Seth never had to feed her. No. So that for four months, we anyway. never fed her. No. Okay. No way. So at, at what point um, did you guys become concerned about her weight? Um, okay, so it's always kind of it's it's always kind of been there. It's always been something that we watched. Um, however, it never I'll say it never seemed to cause because it never it never did. Uh, but I just felt you guys are watching my words, so um, it never caused her. Let's put it this way: she never was sickly in any way, mm -hmm. slow, lethargic. Um, that no, no, no health indicators right. that said anything was wrong other than that she was skinny, which I just, I, re, I didn't, I, I just didn't let it get to me um, because, like I said, very skinny. Um, she started putting on weight recently. We really started really, you know, pounding the uh, the solid food down in the last like month or so. Really makes sure she gets some chicken, potatoes, cheese, stuff. How, how recently was that? A month. Both. There are two. Okay. And, um, Cause that's what Tatiana said, is that a, a, probably the last month or two is when you guys actually became a little concerned about the weight. Yeah. How how do you feel about weight size? Was she okay or was she... I was a tad concerned, but then I remembered. Um, I'm not on show to worry about anything. Sure. <laughs> but then I remembered Elizabeth. And help it teach you what then and how she would fill in lengthwise, but not widthwise, until she was about a year. So what what, what was your tab concern? What was that? Was she just not gaining enough weight, or was that the concern? It was possibly it was just. Um, I think what got to me was seeing like other babies just so chunky and and always hearing like, oh, she's so small, and it's like, yes, she's she's premature, she's petite. Oh. Mm -hmm. alone, yeah, you know, yeah. and also I forget like all these babies are formula fed and there's nothing against formula sometimes sure. you need to do it mm -hmm. but the formula is what chunks up the baby sure, sure. and I just didn't do that um, so then I got it out of my head there's just so good so it, you had a little bit of a concern due to her weight but not her length but you weren't overly concerned you got it out of your head because you realized that she's fine you know, yeah I was I was scared not a big night well we all can do that so at six months, other than a little bit underweight, you considered her to be appropriate size. Yes, and okay. developmentally as well. I mean, she was, she was doing real well developmentally. Yeah. In the last part, Tatiana said the baby was premature, even though Seth said... She was late for the delivery. She checked over the baby, said he's healthy. And, yeah. According to the investigation, Seth fed the baby four cups of solid food, which was this. Four cups of this is way too much, which tells us about her eating habits and his neglect in her absence. By now, you must be realizing how Seth feels like a potential suspect, and there's irrefutable evidence backing this, from his inconsistencies and cover-ups to his clear signs of nervousness. So, so a month or two ago, you two became concerned and started putting some proteins to her, some chickens and cheeses and whatever, just, just trying to bulk her up a little mm -hmm. bit. And, and did you believe it was starting to work? I seemed to definitely notice that she was getting heavier. Um, Tatiana mentioned it to me. My mom mentioned it to me, so I would say yes. So Tatiana thought she was she was getting healthier too and that she was mm -hmm. getting bigger? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because um, she's always been growing long. She's just never put the meat, like that's not, she's yeah. never put the meat on. Right, right. Yeah, that's You know, um, but you don't really think what? too much of it at the time. Um, Good, really? um, so, uh, sorry. No, um, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. But Seth, here's the thing is that she's so tiny. Was, it, was there never a time that you just like, well, there's something really wrong? There was never a time where I thought there was something really wrong. Um, I did say to Tatiana, you know, hey, um, you know, with her being the age she is, let's really try to see if, like, the protein, um, the fat and the protein as her digestive system is developed, let's see if that 
kicks things into gear and it's not, you know, wants to see a doctor. No. Um, because, you know, she's, she's a skinny little girl. When did you have that conversation? I have like two weeks. Now his nervousness is about to spike, because after learning all this from Tatiana and him, the detectives now bring up the burning question of this entire case. Why did he call the lawyer first and not 911? And why didn't he check on the baby for 38 hours? I don't know what's wrong, um, I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, I just kind of like woke up like a regular day. I wasn't feeling very well last night. Um, so I kind of, I, I slept in because I didn't sleep very well. Um, um, I, I think I rolled out of bed like 8 8.30 to care of some chores. Uh, and then I laid back down. Um, and then my wife told me she was uh, going to go right up the street to the neighbor's house to go get some kids. Uh, and when she came back, I woke up, and then I guess she decided, you know, come in. And that's that. So, the, so the, what did you do when she told you that? I, I split out of bed and raced to the room. And, you know, so they're helpless, right? Like, what, you know, what, to do? what am I going to do? Yeah. I, could, I, I, could, I could tell she was dead. <laughs> Even though most of the interrogation parts were redacted, notice how he so casually and calmly talks about his daughter's death, as if it does not affect him. So yeah, I couldn't. She's a mom. Right. She's so. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to dealing with a lot of dead bodies. The, the farm. Yeah. So I know what they look like. Um... That was it. So what did Tatiana do? She tried to do CPR. So were you sorry. Were you in there when she was doing in the same room with her when she was trying CPR? Yeah, I thought it. Yeah. And then what were you doing? She's the one who knows how to do all that kind of right. stuff. So I was just I was looking and watching and um just thinking about what to do, thinking about, you know, just trying to think about what to do next. So what did you do next? Call my dad. Okay, and then what did you tell your dad? I, I don't know what to do. You know, I, how are you sure? Well, I, I kind of figured I was supposed to call the police. Um, I just, I, I don't know, I don't have any experience with it now. Um, well, I didn't then, I do now. Um, so I, I just called them and, you know, Said, hey, hey, should I, should I call the police or, or what? I don't, I don't know how this works. Um, and he said, yeah, um, you know, we'll be on the way. Um, you know, call them when when we get there, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, it had been about an hour and some change, and I was starting to get impatient because I did not want to. I know, I know how it looks when people wait to make a police call. So I, so. You know, I just... Mm -hmm. So you called prior to... So I, so I got a patient, I called my wife, like, are you guys here yet? Cause you know, it's like 11.05 now, I don't want to... I, I knew this was going to be a process too, so I want to get things going. Yeah. And um, yeah, they were in Cedar uh, at the gas station. And so um, they like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be there. And so then I called you guys. So... Um, yeah, because obviously you, you're an intelligent man, so you know, obviously for us, and you just said yourself, it looks weird, right? And the, but you, I'm saying you don't know what you're doing, but in our world, we deal with this a lot, because we don't know every single person in the county, and everyone's for sure how these are. Sure. Um, and I would have, I wanted to just like call you guys first, but not, I, I was following my legal advice, so. Yeah. I'm sorry if that, there's a problem at all, I just. Uh, just do what the lawyer told me to do. No, and well, here's the thing. I'm not saying. I'm just telling you. I'm just confirming what you said. That looks weird. You know, because that, that's all. We're not like saying that you did something horrible in those two hours. We're just saying that you, you know, it's not the, it's not the norm. So, sure. Um, so what did you guys do during the two hours? You sat there and cried. Yeah. 
Titanic call it a nerd job. Yeah. We need guests for coming. Clean anything else? Yeah, we clean up the house a little bit. All right. Why was that? It was a mess. Uh, I knew we were gonna have my parents over. So, <laughs> um, the show so, about me and Matthew. Yeah. Like the so, um, yeah. So you know we like. So what all, what all the house cleaning entail? Um, wiping up the counter. And this is so not the time to be worrying about the mess at home when you have a 10-month-old dead. His description almost feels as if it was planned, or as if he's some psychopath who's so emotionally detached that he feels no remorse. During this interrogation, he mentioned countless times how Tatiana would do the important stuff, like shopping for the kids and feeding the kids. And at such an intense moment, she was the one who had to administer CPR. Clearly, he's a neglectful father who's absolutely unashamed for his actions. And the worst part is, he knows that what he did was wrong. Because of this, he'll try to talk smart to Tatiana when the two meet again. But before that, the detectives go back to Tatiana and point out a few discrepancies that incriminate her. Alright, we're out. Just finishing up with Seth and that. So, Seth basically said the same thing you said. Except for Seth, that he, he did say that you'd have to strap him and his family down to the table before a doctor could touch you guys. You don't agree with that? I... You don't have that same belief? I do, for the most part. Like, except for the... I mean, if somebody had a broken leg, he tends to be a bit dramatic. Um, he grew up reading Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe you could tell. Yeah. Yeah, he's a smart guy, though. Very. Yeah. And he's, he's very passionate and dramatic. So I, I'm not surprised he said that. But, um, so he said that his mom, starting to allow him not to go, has been telling him, I don't know if she told you, that, oh, yeah. that that child needs some medical care. Yes, she has. How many times has she told him that? I don't know how many times she told him. How many times she told you that? Once, and I can't remember. Okay. How long ago was that? About a month ago. Okay. Okay. And she, now, he said that she was just at your house, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday before that. Uh, yeah. Oh. I mean, maybe, because we went to Golden Corral, so it could have been a few days before that, and he could be mixing Sundays up. But, um, but it was definitely within the month. It's just, huh? Date sure. So within the last... She was at your house? Yeah, and, and she was still interested on... She's still interested on I mean, how many times did she insisted on it? Um, there was once that... I only recall one time. It could have been twice sometimes because I, um... I, I may have brushed it off the first time she mentioned it. She's like, oh, no, we're not going to talk to her. Just... It doesn't matter. Oh, well. And what did she say that time? She suggested instead of asked. Um, I just she just noted she keeps her redder and fuller so I thought that she was keeping her food well how tough alright well we're going to try to get you guys out of here right now I'm just going to step on and talk to him real quick and just make sure we don't have more follow up questions so we don't have to keep bothering you tight so let me just okay. just take a couple minutes with him yeah, no, I'll be right back with you, okay? Um, I could use the restroom already. I'm sorry. I just, I really have to go. Oh, no, so that's, that's our mistake. Okay. We, we asked someone that was in there, and he did this to us, and he must have forgotten about you. Oh, so. that's fine. That's our mistake. Okay. So, the detectives now have clear proof that her anti-medical system mindset, which is the same as her husband's, is the cause of the death of the daughter. And no matter how much she cries about it, the reality is she just followed her husband's choice. Notice how she said he's very smart. Even in such a desperate time, she doesn't stop siding with her husband, who might as well have dragged her into self-incrimination. Now, the only part left to see is when the two are put in the same room and have a heart-to-heart. -heart. At this point, the detectives have access to Seth's phone and Tatiana's car, for which they gave the right to search willfully. This will further prove everything we've concluded, and how her husband has guiltlessly accepted his fate. Hi, Ben. Hi. How you doing? Oh, yeah. 
Happy that I'm with you now. Me too. Yeah, I'm tired of I'm like really. I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm born. Because we're such bad parents. Not even allowed to talk to them. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Took so long asking me all about the kids off pregnant birth, weight, height, and eating habits, and developmental skills. Mm-hmm. Good hair, pee, and pool. And then I think that was a distraction, because right after that, it was just like, why did it take you so long to call? I just kept berating you, and I didn't want you to lie to you. So you told me to call the police after it. Oh. I didn't know. I told you, like, six times. I was waiting for the lawyer to be there, because we knew that this would happen. So I told them they were for... I didn't see your parents, but I said, lawyers. I just know what you do while you're waiting. I called off work. I, I slept. Then I sat and cried. Are you here? I said, listen to maybe. You know, their job is to fill cells. It's their job. So they can fill two cells right now. They're not just like they were angry. Like it sounded like they were trying. I don't think it will be mine, but like, hurry up. Of course, that's what they're doing. Trying to drive the wedge in between it and help somebody accuse of the other. That's why they came at you first. Because they're, because they own them. They can probably look at me. Yeah. They can have their shit to know. So I'm going to break down the security of the oh, uh, block up. We, we need to see what they're looking for. Oh. All right, we're going to go. You can know what's going to happen. You're going to get really bad to me. But I really like to not talk about it at all anymore today. Okay. It's so terrible. It's so terrible. Can't ever do this again. We at least gotta take her. We gotta, there's problems. We gotta take the doctor at least to see. Okay. Yep. At this point, the two were officially scared straight. They realized the ramifications of their anti medical system mindset, and now they had to pay. The next day, on August 3rd, 2018, Seth and Tatiana came back to the police station, but are now under arrest. Now, while the first interrogation proved their neglect, this interrogation of Seth will prove his guilt. Now, it sounds like you may have been expecting us to come today. Back and talk to you today. Uh, oh, you mean here? Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I expected all of the worst, so, yeah, you did. Pretty much, that's pretty much what I come to expect of the U.S. government, so. Separate, if you can do me a favor, don't separate us from the U.S. government because we're not the U.S. Well, government. I know you guys are part of the machine, though, so yeah. we try to keep our stuff out of the machine. But, and I, I can respect you for saying that, though. Um, I kind of get where you're coming from on that to some extent. Um, just that I ask you not make us all the same. Brush because we're not all the same. Okay? We're, I think we're pretty decent guys. He's kind of a jerk sometimes, but I agree. Unlike the last time, he means business. All he can do is act like a big guy trying to belittle the detective. But the detective knows better than to let Seth get to him. Well, you said you kind of expected us to come back, but what, what made you think you were going to come back? Well, you know, your job is to fill cells. So they're there to fill, fill oh, cells? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, a, that's the purpose for the truth. No, why, why would you say that radical? Just, I'm out there. I know that. Which, I guess we're 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. What makes you think you're out there, though? I think what you, when you say you're out there, what you believe, though, is what you believe. Even though you think others think you're out there, you think what you're is correct, right? That you're there. You're saying, yes. All right. So I don't think you're that far out there, right? The doctor, the video on top scene, yes. Says he's been like this for a, long, a while. With the car. He said she hasn't eaten or drank enough to cause her down. Uh, that's I'm not, I, I, you guys have a search warrant. I'm happy to let, renew it and have you go through my garbage and see all the other things. Uh, right. The, or, uh, the, here we are in a second, okay? Yeah. I'm not saying you're not a caring guy because I think you absolutely are. I think Tatiana's a very caring lady. I think with the kid that you guys have, the farm you're trying to run, and with the pressures of providing for your family, I think some oh, yeah. meals got missed over the last couple of months. And gradually, she's in those places. The detective got him comfortable enough to go from a closed hands posture to an open hands one. With that openness, the detective brings an alternate theory that it was neither his nor Tatiana's fault. By posing the cause of death as unintentional, it helps Seth open up and admit the truth about why his baby was so underweight, despite his claims of feeding her four cups. Did she always eat all four cups? <laughs> she always eats everything. Yeah. Never seen She still washed the back up. I mean, you know, she still she spits up a little bit, but not even I mean, I got like little bad stains mm -hmm. um, from from see, I am not bullshit me guys. Like right. this is from me carrying her. Yeah. And then um sorry, go ahead. No, I know this is tough for you. And we're not like so we're not here to pick on you. Okay. As soon as he turns to the stain, his left leg starts fidgeting. This can either mean he's getting nervous from telling an untrue story, or maybe he got emotional looking over the stain of his dead daughter and started tearing up. She doesn't cry a lot. She cries whenever she's something wrong. Whenever she's uncomfortable, whenever she's hungry, upset, and anyway, she, she'll let you know quick. Like, she's been, she's worse than the other kids about crying, but... Just in that one line, Seth may have shared a little too much about how her daughter was a burden to him. It's possible that the other two kids were easy to raise, but little Mary would fuss so much that it would burden Seth to take care of her. Perhaps this might be the intent overall, to get rid of a burden for sanity and for financial reasons. Something where it's just like, okay, obviously, you know, bone broken, but if it's going to be something where basically some guy in a white coat, no offense, I don't has, coats, it's fine. has a graph that says, oh, well, she needs to be this many inches and this much weight. And since she's not, we're going to call CPS and put you on this drug program. Mm -hmm. And if that's that. I don't buy into that. It's a scam. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong or God just has, uh, has his will and his plan for things, but I did not. Um, uh, so I kind of just honestly thought that And now he's back to blaming the medical system, which at this point was pointing out an important point of malnutrition to Seth. But he would focus on what an inconvenience the remedy would be, rather than actually work on the remedy. Don't you know that she weighed one pound and four ounces more than she was born? No, I do not. One pound and four ounces more than a baby. She weighed less than a lot of babies are born. The detective repeats this shocking number twice to give Seth a reality check on how insanely underweight the baby was at the time of passing. I have a photograph of her right here on my email, if you'd like to see it, so you can at least see what we're looking at. Oh, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it looks terrible. I'm sure you guys are seeing the absolute worst of it. Um, Do you want to see that? 
I don't really want to. It's I'm not, I will not make you so I will not I, I saw your that, call. And that was quite enough for me. I'd like you to look at it, but I would not I would never don't ever confuse that I'm gonna demand that you look at it. You're you her dad. I'll give you the option if you want to look at it so you at least can intelligently um, speak about what we're speaking about. If you don't, what do? What would you prefer? Well, I already told you, but if you want to show it to me, I'll look at it. Right. But you don't want to feel. Not really, no. Okay. The reason I, I don't even bring it up to try to gross anyone out here. It's just we have to see what, to see through our lenses and see if that's what you recall. See, is that what you remember? Um, why don't you go ahead and show it to me? I can tell you what I remember from the day before. She looked very different. There's no way Mary could have lost that much weight overnight. Now, Seth is sitting with his arms crossed, indicating a defensive posture, as he knows he's being accused. This, this is her size. That's what she looked like when we, when we removed his parents from the thing. He is looking at his dead daughter's picture, and he couldn't shed a tear or give any physical response to seeing her. So we can rule out that this monster will mourn or give any form of emotional response to this case or react to any emotional trigger, which would probably trigger Tatiana, but not him. Um, in layman's term, she died. She's dehydrated and helpful. Starvation and dehydration. Cuts. And here, here's the thing, we're not... I know, I know, I get it, I get it, I just, I don't, the thing for me is I, it, it's, it's almost like a, like a hellish miracle, because I don't, I don't know how, I got to remember going like this, you know, let me, let me talk to you about, okay, neither of us is saying that either of you don't love your kids, because it is obvious, you do, okay, it's obvious. But it's also very obvious that you're lying to us right now. By your reckoning. No, hold on. Now by my reckoning. Yes, because you can't, you weren't there, you can't say. And so to say that it's a lie, you know, that's something you're going to have to bring up with God in your own day. Hold on. But, okay, well, I got the evidence, man. But, so I guess I'd say it this way is that, that the enemy, okay, we're not doctors, what the enemy is saying is that, is that she's not. Okay, that's what she that, that's what I'm saying. So if if that's if that's the case, we're not in Christmas either. But there wasn't enough frequent cheatings to sustain this is the infamous alternate theory as part of the read technique, in which the detective lays out every possible theory there is, and then leaves it up to the suspect to fill in the gaps. The theory here is that the baby may have gone through so called accidental starvation, which allows Seth to take some part of the blame. You know the back the M he said and he does she at least two autopsies a day, hundreds of them a year, hundreds in his probably thousands in his career. And he remember seeing a case this there. Looks like she was in a concentration camp. And, and I just it, everything you're saying to me is terrible and makes me feel like absolute shit, but I don't know what to say because I, I fed her. Do you think people in concentration camps look like that got that way overnight? No, but they gradually start looking worse like that for a while. So much so that your wife thought a couple of days ago she was probably going to die. And my guess is, now see, I'll tell you, I think you're lying. Because she would have said, her words were of it. gravely ill, and that she thought she was going to I also know you guys are cops. We do from time to time. Are we lying to you now? Absolutely. Which is also why there's no emotion, because you already knew she was going to die a couple of days ago, and had already come to grips with the fact that she was going to die. Now, you sit across from this table and call yourself my brother and say things like that. I, I, I think it's possible. You tell me. They finally call him out on his lack of emotions throughout this entire case. But that doesn't affect Seth at all. He continues to be the cold, emotionless person that he's been since the beginning, with his defensive posture maintained. I can tell you for a fact, for a fact, Seth, that she looked like this for at least a week. Because you knew something was wrong. I'm not saying 
he didn't necessarily feed her. Maybe he thought she had a disease or something, like you mentioned earlier. But she looked like that for a while, and you knew, knew she had a problem. No. The reason why I might deal with it, no emotion, I was crying in the holding cell. But what do you, what do you think we were doing for the hour before I called you guys? What do you think we were doing all last night? I'm used I'm, you, know, you don't know what I've been through to get me here. You know, I don't, I'm not coming out with a, dude, I'm not coming out with a victim story, you won't pity me, but it hasn't been the easiest walk for me. It's hard to believe that he has been expressing remorse even after he had gotten some face time with his wife earlier. He can't fool the detectives here by telling him it has been hard for him, considering how cold he's been this entire time. I don't know. I, I don't, I, you know, my very, my very straight pastor answer is that, um, you know, God gives and God takes away. And, um, you know, I try to do the best according to my understanding. Um, how did she get so skinny and thin? Like I said, I, I don't know, because I, I used to feed her. I, I think we're kind of past the result of why, and I think we're just trying to get a confession of something. Yes, I'd love a confession of something. Like, do you, do you think you had any role in this? Of course I don't. That. that. Well, I there's, there's, there's criminal liability. You know, this criminal liability case? Come on, I finish. Yeah. Whether there's criminal liability found or not, I'm still responsible for anything that could have been done different, anything that could be changed. Well, anything, what do you think could have been done different? Well, of course, you know, the, top, the standard party line answer is, you know, go see the doctor and see what's wrong as to why she's not gaining. Seth is basically saying that he knows what the detectives want him to say, but he's not going to say it because he doesn't believe that's true. They want him to take the blame of neglect, He's sticking to the fact that he doesn't believe in modern medicine and thought his daughter was fine. This is how they've been going back and forth from the get-go. But now the idea of him being a neglectful parent is instilled in his mind. Let's go to the natural answer. We don't let her sleep 15 to 18 hours and we feed her. No doctor necessary. Um, I've never... Well, uh, I've never encountered that to be a advice medical issue. I, I Don't come on. I haven't. She obviously had a medical issue though. Right? My heart this big breaks for you and her. I mean, not really, otherwise you guys wouldn't be trying to destroy what's left. You don't understand that. What should we be doing then? What, I mean, what's wrong? No, if this was your neighbor, what should we be doing? It, what should we do differently? Well, I, I don't think that putting you, to be honest, I don't think putting either one of us in jail is going to do Seth is now blaming the detectives for holding Tatiana and him accountable, as he claims that's destroying the family. Once Tatiana knows about his neglect, she would stop loving him for good. But she respects his values enough to not go against him. However, she might lose every bit of respect for him after she sees the shocking statement Seth makes with blunt honesty. There, there is no, there's no justice for her. There's no, there's no, there's no crime. There's no, it, there's no crime in this? Look, I'm, I know that the American court system will come up with a crime. I, Part of the reason why it, it's like hard for me is because this is a very new idea that that like just every time somebody dies, it has to be like somebody has to go into a box or, or somebody's got to be convicted. I mean, it, it used to be common for kids not to make it. Um, it's called natural selection, and it's a hard part of real life on Earth. Um, do you think she was part of natural selection? She, I mean, she's always been small. She's always... Uh, I don't know how you feel bad about this. What do you think? What do we think? We think Seth has given us more evidence through his cold, remorseless remarks to convict him for murder instead of just neglect. There's a difference 
between, you know, almost sounds to me like you're saying now she was weak. Oh well, I don't care about them. That's how you take it. But I, I'm not, I'm not really too, too worried about it when I get up in front of a judge or a jury. So it, it's, it's a hard thing for me. It's a hard thing. For me. If hypothetically you had a million dollars, would you then send your kids to the doctor? Uh, is that, would I would I be more apt to seek um, you know medical advice attention? Yes, I would. If, if it was uh, something that was more affordable, easier to access, yes, I would. Do you think you've done anything wrong? Well, like I said, um, there are certainly some things that I would have, I would do differently in hindsight. Um, nothing is keeping me up at night. Um, whether you believe it or not, when I do something wrong, I'm convicted of it, and like it won't share it with me. Will not let it go until I redress it. Um, this is something, and we're about done, okay? But it's just something you would ask Jesus for forgiveness for. No. He fixates on the fact that he didn't take any life, the police's involvement as interference, and believes that his life will go back to normal after this. He has little to no care about how Tatiana will forever be scarred from this incident. His desire to bring life back to normal is just a pipe dream, as the detective reads him his charge. Uh, I'll, I'll say, guys, I'm a little surprised at a uh, felony murder. I thought maybe, you know, reckless endangerment, child endangerment, something like that. Well, sir, that, that's the arrest. That's the arrest and a prosecutor in the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, we do not have... Yeah, I was going to say you guys haven't even had time to, like, no. go to court or anything. No, no that's right. Cause so... Well, if this is his reaction after hearing the charge, well, wait till you see his reaction as he's found guilty of the charge, which happened around June of 2020. Seth Welch was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In 2021, Fusari testified that her husband was abusive and would abuse her sexually. Her whole story changed as she now claimed that her husband stopped her from taking the kids to the doctor. In fact, the only part of her claim that didn't change was that she didn't notice that Mary was unhealthy. In November of 2021, Tatiana Fusari was also sentenced to life without the possibility of parole for first-degree murder, and given an additional 15 to 30 years on the charge of first-degree abuse. The most satisfactory part of this case was the jaw-dropping reaction of the couple as they were read their sentence. It was at this point that Seth and Tatiana realized that they'll never see anything outside their jail cell ever again.